Okay. The title of my message is Halloween. What's the big deal? Because so no matter what you think of Halloween, know that it's the very highest satanic holiday. As a Christian, you should not be observing it in any way, especially in church. The Catholic Church is responsible for this day being placed in the church. Mm. Halloween has never been a Christian holiday, and it has no place in the life of a believer in Jesus Christ. In fact, it is an abomination to God, and we should take our stand firmly against it. As we look at its history, we find that its roots go deep into heathenism, paganism, Satanism, and the occult. And its modern today is not even any better. I'll give you the history of the Halloween. It's the Celtic New Year. On October 31st, it is the most important day in the Satanic year. It is known as the Devil's Birthday. It marks the Celtic New Year. It was the end of the growing season. It became a festival of death. On this day, the god of the Celtics was to have called up the spirits of the wicked dead who had died during the past year. At the same time, other evil spirits arose and went about the countryside harassing the people. On October 31st, the Celtics expected to be harassed by ghosts, evil spirits, and demons, and it was no fun and games to them. They would light bonfires to guide the spirits, their own personal spirits, to their own towns and to ward off the evil ones. Now, bonfires was an abbreviation for bone fires. I'll explain it. You have the Druids, which are the Celtic high priests. On October 31st, the Druids went from house to house carrying a turnip. And they were demanding certain foods, fruits, and those who refused were cursed. This turnip had a demon face carved into it, and it was said to have contained a specific demon attached to that specific priest that guided him in his comings and goings to and from the houses. There were sacrifices. These things happened several centuries before Christ. Sacrifices were made to the gods, especially the god of death. Samhain, that's the name of the celebration, pronounced Sawin. Sacrifices were made uh, to the gods, especially the god of death. Samhain, sacrifices all the way from vegetables to humans were offered. This went on and on, and in some parts of the world, it still goes on today. Eighth century, I'm going to go back to there. So in this eighth, eighth century, the Pope, in an effort to get the people to quit uh, the festival of Samhain, invented All Saints Day, which was November 1st. It was an attempt to get the people to turn away from the horrible observance, because he even knew it was horrible, the observance of Samhain. All Saints Day was intended to honor the martyrs of the Roman persecutions. It didn't work. It never works to Christianize a pagan holiday. The holy and the evil do not mix. Amen. The church involvement. In the Middle Ages, there was a great revival of satanic practices and witchcraft and magic like there is today. During the time, the belief developed that witches traveled on broomsticks to the Black Sabbath to worship Satan on October 31st. They were guided by spirits in the form of black cats. The Druids worshipped cats, believing them to be re reincarnated evil people. The festival of death has survived all the efforts of the church to stamp it out, put it out, and get rid of it. The church is now joining the opposition by celebrating this festival. All Saints Day became All Hallows Eve, which means holy or sacred. October 31st is the evening before All Hallows Day, and came to be called in the Western world All Hallows Evening, and then Hallows Ian, which was 
short for evening, and then of course now today is Halloween. This is where the name it derived from, and this is as we know it today. Today's Halloween, modern Halloween. Now if you look at the present day celebration of Halloween, isn't the whole theme of the darkness, death, fear, threats, destruction, and evil. There are witches, broomsticks, bats, owls, so on and so forth, death, monsters. You dress up your children as demons and witches and ghouls and monsters, werewolves, and send them out into the street in the darkness to reenact what the Druids did, demanding food from the people under threat of tricks or curses if they don't comply. I mean, our kids are not going to beat up somebody who don't give them a handful of candy. <laughs> so at Halloween, there will be apple body, divinations, which is the fortune telling, haunted houses, candles lit, and spirits called up. There will be seances, Ouija boards, in the name of fun and excitement. There will be sacrifices of dogs, cats, rats, chickens, boats, and last but not least, humans. You say, well, we don't take it seriously, but the devil does, and so does God. Particularly, this is true when the church, which he purchased with his own precious blood, builds houses of horror in its fellowship halls so that the little lambs who have been entrusted to its care can be terrified and opened up to invading spirits of fear and torment and confusion. How do you think this makes the Lord feel? The next section is Halloween, trick or treat. You can call it a duck, a horse, a cat, a dog, but it's still a duck. You can call what you do a fall festival, hallelujah party, but you are still observing Halloween. Even if you dress up as Bible characters, Halloween is the highest satanic day of the year. Now, people think that it's funny to scare people to death. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. So guess who's scaring you? Tell your children the truth about Halloween. I'm asking you guys. Revelations 21 and 8 says liars won't make it to heaven. Then parents, you guys will be doing your, your jobs, not putting your children at risk for the invading spirits. Joining, I guess, the world today. You know, we need, we need to stop being worldly Christians is what we need to stop doing. You guys can pass out candy some other time. Now, I read an article about the church's hell house going nationwide with how-to kits. In Arvada, Colorado, a controversial Halloween spectacle called Hell House, dramatizing real-life horrors of abortion, teen suicide, funerals, and it's marketed nationwide. The Abundant Christian Life Center, which produced last year's Hell House, they produced it, filmed it, is selling how-to kits to churches around the country for 149 bucks. For another $15, the churches also can get a compact disc of Hell House's awful sounds. For real. The church has spent about $10,000 marketing and producing these kits. Now, this is what the Reverend said. His name is Keenan Roberts. YouTube, Reverend Keenan Roberts. <laughs> said God allowed this to happen for his glory and honor. Wow. He's a youth pastor and the writer and director of this hell house and we needed to cultivate it this is what he says we needed to cultivate it and share something with such a radical impact we want to shake other cities like we did Denver 
more than 5,000 people saw Hell House during the five nights that it was staged last October, last year. At $5 a head, the church took in $25,000 and made a $17,000 profit. Supporters say the gory dramatization, which included a funeral for a person who died of AIDS, a simulated abortion, and hell was necessary to reach a sinful world. But others can call Hell House nothing more than a money-making scheme that preaches hatred and tolerance. 1 Samuel 15 and 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's sad. Yeah. Witchcraft and Satanism. Witches are for Halloween or for superstitious primitives in 7th century Salem. That seems to be the modern outlook of sophisticated skepticism and a knowing smile when it comes to witchcraft. And yet Times, this is another story, Times recent cover story would indicate that witchcraft is not a thing of the past. Satan is not dead. Young people by the thousands are probing and getting into seriously the mysteries of the other side. From seances to Satan worship, Leading universities report over-enrolled courses on witchcraft and the occult book sales have doubled in three years. Most American high schools have their campus witches and warlocks. Halloween is celebrated by our children in the United States. The issue is becoming debatable inside Christian circles because of the rise of the occult in America. Witchcraft and Satanism revivals and their obvious tie with pagan holiday causes Christians to question if the church should participate in Halloween. Wow. Means now the church is starting to realize that hey, it's getting out of hand. We need to do something about it. Children are in costumes and masks with Halloween pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, another name for the wheel wisp, an ancient symbol of a damned soul too long considered harmless fun and innocent pranks, do you think? Halloween is celebrated masquerading as church fundraising bazaars, decorated with black cats and witches, skeletons, scarecrows, haunted houses, so on and so forth, dummies and coffins. It should not be integrated with the holiness of the sacred house of God. It's wicked and brings curses. You can read that in Deuteronomy 11 and 28. I put that here. It says, The curse, if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I commanded you today by following other gods, which you have not known, when the Lord your God has brought you into the land you are entering to possess, you are to proclaim on Mount Jerusalem the blessings, and on the Mount Ebel, the curses. Some see it as evil, and will have nothing to do with it, the celebration. Others, as harmless fun, partake fully. Costume parties, Halloween decorations, trick-or-treating. Still others try to find a middle area, gray area approaching, allowing trick-or-treat, masquerades, but as Bible characters. They think that by celebrating Halloween as Noah or somebody in the Bible, that it's okay. Some churches are now seeing the influence of its fruit. One cannot deny the occult nature of Halloween, that it is not in line with the Christian that is in character. Despite the clear contrast, Christians defend the complicity in the holiday, asserting their liberty. In Christ, from the bondage of legalism, declaring it is only innocent fun. But God never gave us the liberty to engage ourselves in evil. In Jeremiah 10, 2 and 3, it says, Learn not the way 
of the heathen, for the customs of the people are vain. I'll turn my book to 2 Corinthians 6, and I'll read 14 through 17. It says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and the devil? Or what does a believer have in common with another unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them, walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. The Bible clearly teaches that there is both a natural, material world, as well as an invisible, spiritual world. The domain of physical human beings is the physical world, of course, whereas the heavenlies are occupied by the spirits. Among these spirit beings, there are two classes, the good and the evil. In the scriptures, both holy and unholy spirit beings are designated as angels. That would be in Revelations 2, 12 and 7. Usually, the unholy angels are referred to as demons. That's translated in the King James Version as devils. The battle today, no one can dabble in the occult and come away unscathed, unshackled. It is not harmless games and fun. Occult involvement, whether done innocently or not, is disobedience to God's word. When people ignore God's warning and enter a forbidden realm, they witness spiritual phenomena and other things that we as believers shouldn't. The devil doesn't have supernatural power. However, everything he does for people, he requires payment. The result of occult involvement causes oppression, depression, confusion, delusion, and physical ailments of all sorts. We are warned not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Playing with the occult has become very attractive to us as Americans. Everywhere you go, you will witness occult activity. It is blatant. Psychic and astrologers are using 900 numbers. Occult themes are being worked into many television programs. Talk shows are featuring astrologers, divinatory, clairvoyants, Scientologists, Satanists, witches, so on and so forth. Even Disney World is deeply involved in the promotion of the occult. This is Second John said, Many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biteth him God speed is partaker in his evil deeds. These wicked beings can suggest, suggest evil, but cannot coerce the will of another creature. They may spread snares and devices to ruin the children of God, but cannot compel any other being to comply in their designs, nor can they employ God's creation other than as he decrees. They have never been able to defeat God, and actually God uses them as instruments to correct the erring saints. Halloween, or All Hallows' Eve, before the coming of Christianity, the pagan Celts in Northern Europe, this is where the majority of this goes on, and even I saw a thing on it today. 
The bonfires are lit on the hills, and these are throughout England, and gradually transferred to November 5th to mark some arrest of this guy Fox dude. And All Hallows Eve was a night when the dead stalked the countryside. The countryside offerings of food and drink were put out for the ghosts. They passed by to the west always, the direction of the dying sun at sunset. Darker and colder creatures still roam through the night on Halloween. Demons and hobgoblins, witches who straddle broomsticks or shank bones, flew in the sea or rode on coal black horses. An old witch was ceremoniously burned on a bonfire of Halloween. I have more about masks. A very popular Halloween custom is wearing of masks. False faces. And we already know witches, devils, bats, monsters. People hide behind all sorts of masks. Some hide behind hats and still others, including many of today's youth, and others hide behind dark sunglasses. From earliest times, people all over the world still have worn masks of all sorts. I have. I had one that I won a Halloween costume with. And you couldn't even tell it was me. It was one of those professional ones that was glued to my face and it took four hours to put on. I won a Halloween contest with it. I was a ghoul. Uh, you know, I, I'm guilty. You know, trick or treating, candy snatching. You know, run around and steal little kids. You know, yeah, he, he got it right there. <laughs> We've all done it, being mean to little kids and stuff. And you know, it has happened to me too. So me and my friend got our candy snatched from us too after carrying on a big old bag. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> and they hope that demons who have brought the disaster would see the mask that they were demons too, and it would just pass them by. So I was like, oh, that's that's the main reason for the mask because when the dead arose, so they say, yeah. and if you were dressed up as a, a ghoul, a zombie, or something, then the spirit would come by and say, oh, you're like me, just keep going. And that's why they did it, just to be passed over by the spirits. Masks can be divided into two categories, the religious and the profane. Masks are worn by the dancers and the religious ceremonies of Western African tribes. The theater of ancient Greece, for example, the secular use of the mask. The use of the mask enabled actors to double and triple the number of parts they could play during any one of their plays. So masks have played a big part in our, in our past. History traces to the ancient religion of the Druid, a religion so evil that Rome forbade its practice. Superstitions linking cats with reincarnations made special objects of notice on Halloween. Numerous legends surrounded the holiday. The two significant things supposed, supposedly occurred on that night. One knows about the Headless Horseman. Halloween is a blasphemous perversion of the Christian belief in the resurrection in a glorified immortal body. In Druidism, the dead are raised as horrifying creatures of the night, hideous monsters, decaying skeletons, vampires, etc. They receive not glorified bodies, but grotesque ones. Not immortal bodies, but inhuman ones. Second, Samhain was the supreme night of demonic jubilation. This was a celebration of the beginning of the winter darkness. As daylight grew noticeably shorter and night lengthier, the hordes of hell who had roamed the earth in a wild celebration of darkness and death, all in honor of Samhain, Satan, the poor mortal forced to travel on such a night. The only thing the superstitious people knew to do to protect themselves in such an occasion was to masquerade as one of the, the demonic horde. So, I just wanted to read this. We as Christians should begin to pray for our families, one another, church leaders, cover the children with the blood of Jesus and the protection of God during these days that are coming up right now. Because it is getting so close between now and Halloween, children are being snatched 
and sacrificed for Halloween. It says right here, there is no question that human sacrifices are occurring. Bind the powers of darkness and loose the power of God, according to Matthew 18 and 18. There are more than 2 million children missing every year, many too young to run away. At least 7,000 are found dead every year because of Halloween. You know, some of our children, like last year, you know, they got mad at me because of Easter. This year, they get mad at me because of Halloween. Why can't I celebrate it? I want to go back to my mommy and start acting up. But now we know the truth about Halloween. It is up to you guys. I know what I'm going to do. As Christians, we should begin our own spiritual warfare, especially these next days. Wow. Tonight, witches all around, they begin their preparation to do all these things. The children snatching, the sacrifices, everything like that, starting October the 18th. On the 18th day of October, faithful followers of evil spirits gather for 13 days before the eve of Halloween of Sabbath. During this time, they offer sacrifices, humans or animal, to the God of the spirit of this world, Satan. These sacrifices are to obtain spiritual power. All the followers must give a blood sacrifice. Some give their own blood. Some offer animals. The more power they want, the greater the sacrifice. And basically, if I would have known this a long time ago, me and Stacy were talking about this, I would have never celebrated Halloween. But Mike loves it when I expose holidays and just tell the truth. You know, I mean, I'm not preaching about nothing. I'm just telling the facts. I'm stating the truth about what we are supposed to know because other churches out there, they are not telling their own congregation. Oh, well, this and this and this. I mean, they're just going around it. I know the Catholic Church in New right now. The biggest Catholic Church there, they're having a haunted house. I hope it's not hell house, but <laughs> All right, let's close in prayer. Father God, I thank you for allowing me again the opportunity to share with my brothers and sisters the truth about this evil pagan holiday coming up, Lord. I ask that you cover each and every one of our children, all of our families that are out there, all of their children, all the little kids out there who cannot escape the evil, Lord. I ask you just to send warring angels to be with them and protect their little minds, their little hearts, their little spirits. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.